Ah, here we were, another Halloween. Couldn't wait to uh, dress up in costume, carve the jack o' lantern. You know, goodies to the, some of the kids trick or treating in my neighborhood, and couldn't wait to hit up my uh, buddy's house for a nice little bonfire that he was having. Dressed up. Went outside, carved my jack o' lantern, and chillaxed for a little while. Handed out some candy to some kids. Was out there for a couple hours, saw some cool costumes. Went through a bag and a half of candy. And by 9 30, 9 45, things slowed down, and that's why I decided to uh, pack the. Uh, bowl of candy back in and head over to my buddy's house. He lives a little bit out in the sticks, but not too bad. Only about 15 minutes away. I drove over there and sure enough, my good old buddy Dave had the bonfire going in the back yard and had a keg <laughs> going. Had some liquor bottles out as well. Quite a few people were out, but not too many, about 20 people. The usual Halloween get together. Chicks and dress scantily, all, the whole nine yards. <laughs> I sat down in a lawn chair next to him, next to the bonfire. So. Hey bro, how's it going? Not too bad. How about yourself? How's your night been so far? Pretty good. Pretty eventful. I had a lot of trick-or-treaters earlier. Yeah, so did I. Is, uh, do you think this is the uh, peak of the uh, get-together? Or do you think are you uh, expecting for more people to show up? There'll probably be a few more, but we're getting close to capacity. I voted by like 25 people. Yeah. Any chicks? <laughs> Dave rolled his eyes and looked around. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I feel ya. Elliot turned some music on. People began to dance around the fire. Now, not precisely around the fire, but in the general vicinity, in their own little areas. So, uh, we're going to do our, uh, annual tradition. Ah, ghost stories around the campfire. I nodded deviously. Yeah, sure. Just give it a little while. Little while. Let people have their fun once they're trying to relax a little. That's when we'll begin the festivities properly. I nodded and got myself a beer. Got up and danced for a little bit. Met a couple new people that I wasn't familiar with. One guy was named Lee and another chick was uh, Kayla. Parted around for a little bit, had some fun. A couple hours went by and finally it was time to uh, tell some ghost stories. A few people had some rounds, and then it was my turn. Finally. I'll talk about the headhunter. The headhunter of Hickory Road. Every Halloween, someone would go missing along the road. Often found with their without their head, or sometimes nothing would turn up at all. They would completely disappear. Nobody knows how or why or who or what. But every single Halloween, someone would get it. A headhunter would get them. Psh, that's bullshit. 
shouted Dave. Think it's bullshit if you want, but... Someone or something is taking those people. I said gravely. The slightest bit of playfulness in the voice. My story went on for quite a bit longer. But most people seemed intrigued by it. Everyone is paying close attention to my words and my enunciation. The mood and the atmosphere I would set up. Oh, that's an awesome story, said Kristen. Mm hmm. Did they ever figure out who it was, or did they have any idea? Does anyone know? I shook my head in the negative. Fortunately, no. The murders have never, and the disappearances have never been solved, and nobody truly knows. This has been going on for since the colonial times, and still, nobody really knows the reason. Really, how far back in colonial times? That's Kristen. 1780s, 1790s, maybe. Ah, that's interesting. She whispered. Several more stories were told, and after a while, the music picked back up, and everyone started dancing, smoking, drinking, having fun again. It was coming along 3 a.m., and most everyone began to leave. And then finally Dave asked me, straight out. Hey Stu, you ever think about visiting that uh, old covered bridge on Hickory Road? Especially tonight. I looked at him puzzled. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Let's go have a look for ourselves, find out. Does the phrase fuck around and find out mean anything to you? I asked. With a slight sarcasm and humor, but with a serious undertone. Yeah, but no gluts, no guts, no glory, my friend. He smiled. Dave, we don't know what's out there. We don't know who's out there. We don't know the reason behind all of this. We don't know what, what's doing or how they're doing it. We, there's just so much that we don't know. Yeah, but how many people were in a car when that happened? Quite a few, actually. Dave looked suddenly uh, reluctant. Really, how many? The majority of them, since the 1950s, have been people in cars. Is that right? Yeah. I nodded. Let's take our chances, bro. Come on. I'll bring my GoPro. We can record the whole thing. I'll post up on my YouTube channel. Come on, let's do it. Dave. We're barking up the wrong tree here. I'm like, man, bro, we... No, no, don't do it. We're not doing this. This is crazy. Come on, Stu, don't be a puss. Let's do it. Come on. Imagine all the stories we can tell all the chicks and all our bros. What if we can get whatever it is on tape? Record it. We'd be famous. We'd be rich. Dave. No. <coughs> Dave, making chicken noises and began to laugh afterwards. Oh, come on, Stu. It's probably nothing. Dave, a murder or a disappearance every single Halloween in the same exact location, same exact area of woods is no, is not nothing. We sat there and stared at each other in an awkward silence.
Let's do. Let's do. Let's do it. Dave said, smiling. Oh, Jesus. I have no idea why I let you talk me into doing this stupid shit. Well, let's do it, man. It's probably nothing. I mean, worth the odds. Come on. It's almost morning anyway. Dave, it's almost 3 a.m. Yeah? So? You know what they say about 3 a.m., don't you? Oh, the witching hour. The witching hour. Yeah, I know all about that bullshit. Come on. Let's have some fun. Dave, we've been having plenty of fun already. You know what I mean. Oh, you want the thrill. You want the real deal. You want the... You want the glory of getting whatever it is on tape and recording. You want the... Jesus. Come on, let's do it. Okay. Okay, fine. Whose car are we going to? Mine or yours? You've been drinking a little less than I have, so... We'll do yours. Alright, let's go. Come on. I got in my car. Started up and we began our drive. The moon was out, shining through the clouds. The woods seemed to just tower over the road. Humanoid like branches jutting out into the sky and arching over the road. As though limbs were trying to reach out and grab us and pull us in. Spent several minutes. Ten minutes maybe, and then we were finally at Hickory Road. Dave, we really shouldn't be doing this. Come on, Stu. We're already here. Dave whipped out his GoPro and began recording. Hey folks, here we are at the uh, Hickory Road Woods, location of many uh, mysterious murders and disappearances. He began going on and on and on about the history of the area and how what was causing the uh, murders and the disappearances was never solved or identified. He went on narrating for a few more minutes and introduced me to the viewers or would-be viewers as he was recording. I started driving slower. Just in case if we saw something, we can get a hold of it. A minute went by and it was finally 3 a.m. As we got deeper into the woods, closer to the bridge, we, we saw someone or something in the road. It was white. It was a person in a white garb of some kind, a white cloth robe. Ah. It looked like a woman with long black hair and a white, old timey white dress, long white dress of some kind. She had long black hair and she was wearing a white dress and Dave, are you getting this? He nodded his head. Yes, of course I'm getting it. Fog was beginning to roll in. It was crystal clear just before, but there was starting to be fog on the road in the woods. We got closer to the woman, but she couldn't make out her face. Her head was 
tilted downward towards the ground. Stu, what's going on here? Said Dave. Oh no, bro. It's please stay in the car. He nodded. Did you, who is that? Do you, do you think she needs help? Do you think she's in trouble? What's going on? I don't know. Dave, I really don't know. Would you mind if I cracked my window and asked her what's going on? Yeah, sure, but just a little bit. Dave cracked his window down a little bit and shouted, Hey, you, who are you? What's going on? Is everything okay? Do you need help? What's wrong? He shouted. No answer. The woman just stood there in the middle of the road, face down to the ground. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you okay? What's wrong? Is everything all right? Do you need help? What's going on? Again, nothing. I begin to get closer to her. Not, not too close to. I nodded in agreement. Yeah, it could be a trap of some kind. I started looking in my rear view mirror and side mirrors. Looking for which angles would be better for me to back out or pull out of just in case if I had to, we had to make a run for it real quick. I flicked my lights from regular to bright and back. Still no response. Well, then I rolled my window down. I cracked it and thought to myself. Hey, Dave. You don't suppose that we're seeing a, uh, you know, do you? I turned to him and, uh, whoops. He shrugged his shoulders and shook his head. I don't know, maybe. And I start out of my window. Excuse me, lady. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, is everything okay? Is there something we need to help you with? And then suddenly, she finally rose her head. Her skin was a, a disgusting green, dead, rotting. So were her hands, her eyes, a detestable yellow. Hey, is this some kind of fucking Halloween prank? What the fuck is this shit? What are you doing? still stared at us, not blinking or missing a beat. Dave gasped. I, I remained there motionless. What the fuck were we looking at? Then she started to itch towards us, doing a slow walk. I put the car in reverse and began to back up. She moved to the right side in the direction of Dave. I backed up 
up a little more and a little more. She started to pick up her walk, moving quicker and quicker towards the passenger door. Dude, just fucking go. Just fucking go. 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 Put the car in drive and sped off. She was inches away from the car door when I made it past her. I looked back in the rearview mirror, but couldn't make out anything. I sped off. God, God, stupid, what the fuck was that? I don't know, Dave, I just... The spirit of one of the victims, I think. Wait. That thing was one of the victims? I don't know for sure, but that's... That's what I think. Copper, let's get the fuck out of my... Well, did you at least get get that on tape? Yeah, he said, nodding. We still had our doors cracked, but... I mean, our, our windows cracked, but... Behind us, we could hear something in the distance. Even though we were going good speed down the country road, we can hear something against the asphalt. Something clacking, pounding against the asphalt. Dave, take a look, look, look behind us real quick and see what that is. Fuck you, Stu. I'm not looking behind us. Let's just get the hell out of here now. Are you still recording? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still recording. The sound grew louder and grew closer. Go on, Dave. Take a look. See what it is. <sighs> God, Stu, I'm so sorry I got you into this. Never mind that. It's too late now. Just take a look and see what it is. Dave reluctantly turned around. And he froze. I looked over at him and his mouth was hanging open. His eyes were... bulging out of his head almost. He was frozen. He, he couldn't move. He couldn't speak. Finally, I looked in the rear view mirror and in the redness of my taillights, I could see a pair of red eyes, about six and a half feet off the ground, galloping right behind us. Outline of a black. Yes, it was a big black horse. A big stallion, black horse. It was mounted by a, a figure, a man, with no head. He had a long sword in one hand and a lit jack lantern in the other. Dave just sat there, motionless, his tongue sticking out of his head, his mouth, his mouth hung open. He couldn't speak, he, he was frozen with fear. I stepped on the gas pedal, accelerated. Quicker and quicker, ten miles some way. horsemen kept speed with us. He 
even managed to catch up with us. He's coming along the right side. Then I felt the clang of metal against metal. The asshole struck my car with his sword. Sped further. Dave began to shake. I can't believe it's actually real. He said. I shook my head and kept on going, concentrating on the road, knowing that our survival depended on what I was doing. The horseman sped up, sped up on our right side, catching up with us. Again, he whacked the metal frame of my car with his sword. Then to my horror, he stabbed one of my tires, my right front tire. Shit, I gasped. The tire went out. I was driving on one floppy tire and our speed, speed decreased dramatically. The metal was almost grinding on the asphalt. What the fuck? Shouted Dave. Just then another swiped the sword except this time it bursted through the glass of the passenger side window. It was one swift stroke. Just a stroke of shattered glass and then... Dave's head was disconnected from his body. Decapitated. Totally severed. Blood shot and squirted everywhere among the broken glass. I screamed. horseman backed off. He got behind me and began to make his way to the driver's side. Just then I was coming into sight of the covered bridge. It was said to be a safe place once you cross the bridge you were safe from the horse of the uh, headhunter. to my to my horror the legend was all too real and I didn't know if the, the bridge would save the day or not I, don't, I didn't I, there's so much I didn't know I could feel hoof steps behind me just as I crossed the bridge I felt a sense of comfort, but I didn't know if I was out of the woods yet truly or not. As I sped past and under the covered bridge, I looked around in my rear view. Horseman actually launched the jack lantern at the back window of my car. The window shattered and I took cover. Broken and shattered glass filled my the inside of my car. The pumpkin penetrated the back window and made it all the way to the front window. The pumpkin spluttered and fire spread all around. I kept going. So finally, my, I realized my uh, car was starting to catch on fire and I had to pull off to the side of the road. I called the police in a manic, 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 manic state. 
explain the situation, my location, and what had happened. I told them to bring the ambulance as well. First they were skeptical, but once everyone showed up, they had an idea of what happened. You really shouldn't have been out here at this time of night, the deputy warned. I know, but my buddy Dave, he convinced me to come out here. That night still haunts me. Not only did I lose my best buddy, I also will never have my sense of innocence with this legend or the night of Halloween. The headhunter became real that, that night. And I'll never be able to etch it out of my mind again. Ever. Ever.